Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office teardown lab. As you can see in front of me, I have a Game Boy Advance. Now, this is a unit that we've had for a long time, and it's got, I noticed, a one of those fancy flash ROM chips, which is always nice. You can see it there, clear. Um, but it seems to have developed a problem because when I last turned it on, I noticed that the D-pad wasn't doing something. So let's just fire this up and figure out what that issue was and then we can have a note, open it up and see. Down, up, right, no left, see? So first thing out is a cartridge and then the batteries. Now I just noticed this looks like a tri-lobe screw. Just to show you something. 256 mega, 256 mega power. Who knows what that means in current money? It certainly didn't mean megabytes. So I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. Oh, that's a normal screw in there. Try, 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 try. So we have one normal. Not sure why Nintendo bothered. God, I don't know how old the uh, Game Boy Advanced is. It must be the game, I'm gonna guess 15 years, 14 years at this point. I did open up one back in the day to fit retrofit a screen illuminator. I remember having to solder that in and uh, solder these tiny wires onto the main board because of course you could adjust the brightness by holding down combinations of the start key and the regular buttons, the A and B buttons. Okay, so that's one, two. Let's, I've got the screws here in front of me. Let's count them. One, two, three, six screws. So we still have the main seventh in there. Let's whip that out. Okay. Oh, that comes off nicely. Just, just fell off really. Great, no wires from the battery compartment because the terminal stayed put, which is handy for us. These are assembled pretty similarly to the actual Super Nintendo controllers. Card reader, bit of foam, right. So the D-pad will be under this area. Just trying to see if I can see any obvious signs of damage but there's nothing really going on that I can see. So that being said we may have to take out the PCB which oh, should be okay but I'm just trying to see we've got one screw here and one screw here so two screws let's go for it shall we. Be a bit ginger now because you can see here there's a ribbon cable that's going to be going to the screen. It's quite a nice PCB. Not, not as much on it though as you think it ought to be. Ah, because the main event is this side. Look at that, plenty to see there. can't really read what's on those chips but there's no need because you'll be able to find so much information about this online. But something that does amuse me slightly here, they've got a flash chip it seems, probably the programming for the unit and uh, it's got dual footprints on the PCB so if they couldn't get hold of the longer one they could shove in this shorter one. 
Nintendo has quite a famous history of having issues with supply, so perhaps they were a bit uh, weary this time around. Um, I'm not really seeing a massive amount of detritus or anything on the PCB that you'd hope to see, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean this region. Is that there's a tiny bit of rust here, so it may well have had some water damage, but then looking at the other side, there's also rust on that. So it's probably sweat from your fingers getting in. I think we'll just clean it up and uh, whack it all back together and see what happens. So we've got a little bit of foam clean here. I'm just applying some flux cleaner. It's normally got enough goodness in it that it will do the job. While that's soaking in, I'm just going to have a look at this D-pad under the light. No obvious signs of damage on there, but what I'll do while that's soaking, Something that you can try if you've experienced something similar is get a piece of paper and just gently, do you see that? There's a little bit of carbon on those, but uh, that's how they work. But you never know, there might be just some oxidised gunk on it. So that's effectively clean. Now. If you're cleaning a PCB, here's a hot tip for you. Get uh, a piece of tissue drip your cleaner on top and then just work it through the tissue. And the tissue should pick up any gunk. Ooh. Use a softer brush than this if you can get hold of one. Okay. But as it's quite smooth and free from components in this area, I'm just going to rub that with my finger. And while I'm at it, let's do this way too. So I think it's possible to assemble this partially and test it. We don't need to put everything back together. Let's make sure the D-pad's in the right way around. Okay, there we go. Can't see, you, sorry, you didn't see that, but the actual D-pad-y bit can twist. So you've got to be careful when you put that in because it actually had twisted. There's some locating holes there. Right, that's fine. Flip it over. Just make sure the speaker goes back in. It's trying desperately not to go back in. There we go. Speakers in. On off switch is aligned. On off switch fell out, no problem. We'll pop that back in. We'll just put our couple of screws in just to locate this PCB. Because it is behind the D-pad, it'll have pressure on it. Can't remember where the other one was from. There was definitely a hole for a screw here and it could be here. Let's look at this case. No. That could have been embarrassing. In the olden days when you used to have laptops, they used to have loads of different layers and uh, each layer had screws and sometimes you'd put a screw in, in quite a legit place, but you didn't realise that it was going to 
be blocking the hole for a screw that was going to go in above it and then you'd have to dismantle the whole thing. Fortunately I haven't seen that in quite a while, that style. Okay, so I think, oh! I've forgotten to put this in, right. Jump cut. Okay, finally got it all back together to this point, so we'll just plop on the back cover, get some batteries in. I'm just gingerly holding it all together by hand. Come on, come on. Interesting enough, the screen is a lot clearer in the camera <laughs> than it is on to my eyes. So I don't know if there's some polarized, polarizing lenses in the camera that's helping that. Oh. Okay, so we've got it all back together now. Let's try it with Mr. Driller, left. Come on, we need left to work now. Right, no. Still no left. Have to go in again, boys. Okay, so we've dismantled it again because left still isn't working. So the only thing I can think of doing is to take the ribbon out for the screen. And really, this is the main board unit. Be careful of being careful of the speaker, of course, we don't want to ruin that. I'm just gonna to have to scrub this all down and really study it under a microscope and see if there's anything I can see going on here and maybe try to buzz out some of these electronics here and work out what's going on. So on further investigation, there's something quite interesting going on here. Here you can see the different pads. And if I buzz these out, you'll see that there are some common pads because these are the grounds, okay? They're all connected together. Now, if I take the other side of this right, which is this pad, and I have a look at the main processor, you'll see there's continuity. Now if I do the same, again for the, say, the down, that's the common pad, so we'll go to the other side. There we go, down. Up will be the same, again, this is the common pad. Nope, so this should be here somewhere. There we go, right there. And if we do the same with the left, so that's the common pad on the left, so we'll take the other side. I've gone all around the chip, I can't actually find the left pad here. So what that means is somewhere between here and here, this left has been interrupted, and I don't know if there's a test point for it, 
Yes, there's a test point. See here? Right here, there's a test point for the left. So it means there's not a break between here and here, but then between here and elsewhere on the PCB, something's gone. Hi, just a quick update for you. I couldn't let this lie, so I uh, attempted playing with trying to work out the sort of pinouts and messing around with it, and uh, frankly, I couldn't fix it. I cleaned up the PCB, really went to town with it. Look, it just will not go left, which means playing a game like Tetris is far more of a challenge than it has ever been. So if you've got any ideas on what this could be, please leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to hear any suggestions. And uh, please feel free to subscribe so you can keep updated whenever I tear down something else. As ever, thank you for watching.